Hey folks, we're Sam and Nathan. Reporter Loves. Our business is all about supporting local artists and creative small business owners through photography, writing, and design. Today we're here to do a quick video tutorial on how to take a great selfie when you need a headshot but can't hire a professional like us. We're focusing totally on taking your own photo, but all of the concepts that we're going to cover can be translated to taking a photo of another person, perhaps a business partner or an employee. Okay, let's get started. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to tell you to use natural light. It's definitely possible to take a good selfie with artificial light, but it generally creates harsher shadows and is more difficult to work with, and the whole point of this lesson is to keep this process simple. So the first step is to stake out both light and backgrounds in your home or office. As you can see, in some of these, I'm facing the window. In some, the window is behind me. Sometimes the light is too harsh and creates a really strong light and dark split on my face. In other cases, the light works, but the background in that particular spot is a huge distracting mess. There isn't a 100% correct answer here. The right answer is what makes you feel like you look your best. Next up, check that your hair and makeup are how you want them. This is personal to what makes you feel great, but we do generally recommend a little bit heavier than everyday wear makeup because cameras of all types tend to wash people out a bit. Wear something on top that is comfortable, makes you feel great, and on brand. The beauty of a selfie shoot is that you don't have to worry about what you are wearing below the waist. I'm taking a true selfie here, holding the phone in my hand. If you want to get fancy, you can play with a selfie stick or even setting your phone up on a tripod or something else stable to use the time delay function. Make sure to turn off any live photo function. Practice holding the phone at different distances from your face. You want to be far enough away that you have ample space around your head, but not so far that you look like you're restraining. Leaving extra space around you is always a good idea. It gives you the most flexibility after the fact. You can always crop in, but not the other way around. Choosing the right angles when photographing yourself is crucial. Play with the angle of the camera relative to you, and also the angles of your face. If you wear glasses like me, angles are the key to avoiding distracting reflections. The most important part of the photo is that people can see your eyes clearly. Higher angles can be flattering, but go too far and you cut off the top of your head or make yourself look like you are in a hole. Low angles can make you look a little taller or communicate strength and power, but again, go too far and it's a shot right up your nose. Notice also that my shoulders aren't square to the camera. That's a very traditional position or pose that is most common now in corporate or government environments. Working with artists and other creative entrepreneurs, we are always aiming for something a little more dynamic, not stiff. Our goal is always to get the image where we want it or as close as possible in camera. We do this by using the best available resources at any given time between the camera, light, and background. Excessive editing can degrade the image quality quickly and do more harm than good. That said, sometimes some color correction, cropping, or other tweaks are needed, but we strongly advise that you use editing tools sparingly. 